Armor rating is a flat number that you can increase by equipping armor, shields, or items that are enchanted to give armor rating. Armor rating is then fed into a calculation that spits out a physical damage reduction percentage, which is how much incoming physical damage is reduced by. That's all there is to know if you wanted the most bare-bones explanation of how armor rating works. Number goes in, percentage comes out, percentage blocks damage. But what are the implications of this system, and how does the calculation of armor rating to damage reduction impact the usefulness of armor? Well, before we can talk about that, we have to talk about the functionality of damage reduction as a mechanic. In essence, damage reduction is an increase to your effective health pool. Enemies will have to do a certain amount of damage more in order to equal the same amount of health loss. For example, let's say you reduce 50% of incoming damage. If everything is doing half damage to you, you've effectively doubled your health pool. If you had 100 HP, then you'd have to take 200 damage in order to actually lose that 100 HP. And so we can say that your effective health pool is 200, or in other words, double your normal health pool. We can figure out the effective health increase of any amount of damage reduction in a similar way. All we need is this equation. To find effective health, first subtract your reduction percentage from 1. This is your damage taken. Then, we divide 1 by damage taken. The end result is our effective health pool multiplier. We can see that this matches up with our earlier example. 1 minus 0.5 is 0.5, and 1 divided by 0.5 is 2. This 2 represents the doubling of our HP. This also works with any other example you can think of. If you reduced 2 thirds of damage taken, then you're effectively taking 1 third of all damage. And so it makes sense that, in order to kill someone, only taking a third of damage, you would need to deal three times the damage. This may seem like a bit of boring math, but what's interesting about it is that this equation's results are exponential. In order to double your health, you need 50% damage reduction, but then you only need 66% to triple your health. 75% quadruples your health, 80% quintuples, 90% gives you 10 times the health, and 95% gives you 20 times the health. Here's a visualization of this effect. So what does this tell us? It shows just how impactful higher damage reductions are, and just how insignificant the low reduction amounts are in comparison. It takes 33% reduction to increase your effective HP by 50%, and 50% reduction to double your HP. The impact that the initial 33% has is doubled in a mere additional 16.66%. Damage reduction as a concept is fundamentally top-heavy. The difference in effectiveness between 10% reduction and 20% reduction is minuscule in practice, but the difference between 80% reduction and 90% reduction is enormous. Choosing between 11% or 17% more effective health is nothing compared to choosing between 5 or 10 times the health. Now so far, this is all how damage reduction works conceptually, but how does it apply to Dark and Darker? To understand the implications here, we need to first look at how armor rating gets converted into damage reduction. If you've played any of the Souls games, you may be familiar with a concept called soft capping, in which the benefits that a stat gives undergoes a bumpy curve. Up to a certain point, the stat will give a large, consistent benefit, and then, upon hitting a soft cap, the benefit will drop. The conversion of armor rating to damage reduction undergoes a similar process. Here's what the values are for conversion, and here's a visualization of the conversion rate. There are two soft caps here, one at 50 armor rating, and the other at 350. Everything up to 50 AR gives a sizable chunk of damage reduction, but that comes to a screeching halt once we reach 50. From 50 to 100, only 0.1% reduction is given per armor rating. Then things slowly start to curve upwards again at 100 and 150, only to drop off slowly starting at 250. Earlier, we demonstrated how reduction affects your effective HP, and we can do the same here. Here's a graph showing how your armor rating affects your effective HP. We can see that this follows the same exponential curve. So that's our data so far. What can we make of it? What kind of impact does this all have on the game itself? Well, the most striking and important thing about this whole system is its exponential nature. More importantly, how incredibly weak it is at lower values, and how incredibly strong it is at higher values, and the way that different classes interact with it. Once you hit 50 armor rating, you hit what is essentially a drought in damage reduction. 50 armor rating is not a lot. Most classes start with over 30, and all it takes to bring it up to 50 is to buy the always available grey leather pants, leather gloves, and a pair of boots. 50 AR is about the baseline you'd expect from a set of poor or common gear, and once you reach that mark, any upgrades you acquire are almost meaningless for a while. This is because at this point in the damage reduction to effective HP curve, we haven't yet reached the point where small amounts of damage reduction are as beneficial as they could be. At 50 AR, your effective HP is 1.16 times. At 100 AR, effective HP only increases to 1.23 times. This is a very insignificant increase in survivability for such a big investment. 
Let's look at this from another angle. In order to increase effective HP by 50%, you would need 165 armor rating. How feasible is this for most classes? Here's a table of every class's maximum armor rating. This assumes the usage of unique rarity gear in every slot with the highest possible rolls, while using the highest armor rating options available. This means that classes who would normally forgo more defensive gear in favor of gear that gives them important stats are instead picking the highest rated armor, regardless of its usefulness otherwise. And this is not including any enchantments, just the raw armor rating of the gear itself. We see that for half the classes in the game, 165 armor rating without enchantments is not a possibility. Barbarian can barely pass this threshold, and Cleric and Fighter both surpass it by a sizable amount. And remember, damage reduction is exponential. At first glance, we might not think that the Cleric surpassing the 165 mark by 100 is all that impactful, but in reality, it results in Cleric getting 2.6 times the effective HP. And Fighter might only beat Cleric out by 70 points, but those 70 points give Fighter 4.2 times the effective HP. Remember, this is with the best possible gear. Even with the best possible gear, half the classes in the game cannot acquire a 50% boost to effective HP. A default Barbarian with toughness and 0% damage reduction has 143 effective HP. None of these classes can ever hope to equate that through armor alone even with the best possible gear. They would need to purposely seek out enchantments on gear that provide HP, armor rating, and damage reduction to get any better. And even then, those enchantments will not be nearly as impactful as they would for a geared up fighter. Getting 5% more damage reduction when your reduction is 25% means that your effective HP goes from 1.33 times to 1.43 times. But someone who has 75% reduction equipping the same 5% enchantment would go from 4 times the effective HP to 5 times. And the same goes for skills like Taunt and Barricade which give flat bonuses to damage reduction. An additional 15% at a low damage reduction amount will only give a small benefit, but a fighter running high tier armor will multiply their health several times over by using these skills. For the sake of it, I also ran the numbers of a player using all blue armor with the best rolls and defensive values in each slot, and it paints a more realistic picture for most of the classes in the game. In this scenario, most classes are unable to scrape past the 25% damage reduction mark, and this is assuming that nobody is running things like lightfoot boots, loose trousers, rawhide gloves, or any other useful alternative armor. The implications of this system as it stands now are not pretty. We might even go as far as to say that this system is quite flawed. First, we have a curve that screeches to a halt extremely early, and only starts to ramp up again once it hits armor rating values that are just out of reach of most classes in average gear. This means that the few classes who can benefit from this segment of the curve will be doing exponentially better than those who can't. This isn't a case of just being able to survive 20% more damage than other classes. This is a case of having several times the effective health of other classes. As we mentioned earlier, this curve also impacts several other elements of design, such as enchantments and skills. Whether or not we can consider an enchantment that gives 5% damage reduction to be strong or not depends entirely on who is using it. In the same vein, the amount of effective health that a fighter can achieve by stacking armor and damage reduction is extremely high. The cap on damage reduction is 95%, which is an absurdly high number in retrospect. 95% reduction means that your health is effectively multiplied by 20. If it were 90%, you'd have 10 times the health. These numbers might work in a purely PvE game, but they might be unreasonable for a PvP game. A player with 2,000 effective HP is nearly impossible to fight, to the point where it necessitates certain skills like Reckless Attack and Weak Point Attack to do any significant damage against them. Ideally, we wouldn't want a class to be so tanky that they require certain skills to be used against them in order to take damage. If someone happened to run into a fighter with this much armor and wasn't playing a class that has a counter, they'd lose by default with no chance for counterplay. A lot of these flaws so far are regarding the high end of the curve, but what about the low end? There are a few hot topics in the game that can be partially explained by how ineffective low armor is. For one, the one-shot meta. The damage that can be gained by gear far outpaces the amount of damage that can be reduced. A strong blue weapon can do nearly 50% more damage than its default counterpart, or even more if attribute and damage enchantments are stacked, or if buffs are used, like Divine Strike. And yet, from default to a full set of blue gear, most classes go from 110% effective health to only 130% effective health. The damage scales way faster than the defense, and so it becomes increasingly difficult to survive getting one shot. It also helps explain what players call the naked meta. With low rated armor, players have a choice to make. Would I rather be able to take 5% more damage, or would I rather move faster so that I can potentially dodge 100% of damage? The correct answer is to stay mobile in order to avoid damage entirely. Many players will avoid equipping armor entirely if it doesn't give enough benefit compared to the survivability that staying fast will provide them. It either needs to give good stats via enchantments, or it needs to have enough armor rating to be worth the trade-off of move speed. 
And so, that's the damage reduction system as it stands now. One that is very ineffective for most classes and most tiers of gear, but for those with rare gear who play one of two classes, it is abusable to the point where the defensive boost reaches exponentially extreme levels. And much of this can be blamed squarely on the way that the curve is designed. You see, the curve as it exists now contributes to both problems. Right away, it hits a soft cap, providing small amounts of damage reduction at a point where damage reduction itself is not very impactful. Then, just as players hit their limit of damage reduction, and just as damage reduction itself starts to have exponential effects on effective HP, the curve ramps up again, and it doesn't simmer down for a very, very long time. This curve is basically the opposite of what you'd expect from a curve that's trying to play around the exponentiality of damage reduction. This is more akin to what you'd expect a curve to be like. As the effects of damage reduction grow exponentially, the amount of damage reduction available shrinks. Because each point of damage reduction is exponentially more valuable than the last, you would rather have a bulk of low value points early, and have the higher value points spread thin later on, in order to make armor more impactful for classes who can't access high amounts of armor rating, and to prevent high armor rating classes from having overly extreme potential. Of course, this may all be intentional, Fighter, and to a lesser extent Cleric, only reach such high numbers because they have exclusive access to plate armor, and so it's obvious that the intent was to give them higher physical damage reduction potential than the rest of the classes. But whether the intent was for their potential to be exponentially higher or not is not something we know. Of course, the game is also very early in development, and it's very likely that the curve we have now will not be the final version, just a temporary curve made to get the system out there and working. Maybe it will change in the future, but chances are that this may take a while, as the developers are focusing more on finishing the game's foundations and creating new content, rather than rebalancing the old. So for now, it's best to familiarize yourself with how armor rating works, and understand exactly what kind of benefit you're getting from your gear.